kind of a perfect storm, I guess you could say. Mark and I were both crazy, so <laughs> that's probably one of the reasons why it even happened. I think it all started when the roof started leaking really bad in the other space. We were kind of like battling with our property manager. They were saying that we had too much weight up on the roof for our air conditioning and heating units. It was getting time to do a bunch of upgrades at the old gym, general maintenance type stuff. The floor down there just falling apart. All those things combined together started uh, the genesis of what are we going to do? We could do some upgrades and changes to the old facility and spend a lot of money doing that. Kind of like putting a lipstick on a pig or something, you know what I mean? It's like the gym's an amazing gym, but you're going to only spend so much money fixing something up. I know the one owner, so I, I talked to him uh, and asked him if they were planning on selling or they were like trying to get new tenants and get rid of us. We checked our options and we went and looked at other places and um, checked out some other facilities. Then they came back a little while later and offered us more square footage if we were willing to move down here. This was offered to us to be able to do in conjunction with not closing the gym. Without it, we weren't going to be open, you know, <laughs> we weren't going to be around. Things do kind of like just fall into place and it all just kind of did fall into place. The design for the gym was Mark as a mad scientist. I must have done 30, 40 different models on SketchUp. My inbox was full with Mark's SketchUps every day, probably two or three a day, and at all times of the day. I would send them to friends and Carter and I would talk about it and have input and so I basically tried to pick everybody's brains. That sort of collaborative thing that let uh, the final design come out. Thinking about getting started, I knew things like engineering and all that stuff would be a nightmare. So we wanted someone who was helping us, who was reputable, who had all the credentials. Did a little research and Vicky was in contact with a couple guys at a company called Vertical Solutions. We hit it off those guys really well. So that's the first stage of construction, right? Is you're trying to be a visionary. You're trying to look at this thing going, here's what we can make it. I mean, this project's definitely been a whole bunch of new experiences. It seems every day it'd be something I've never done before and yet expected to do it in a pretty good capacity. The first thing we did was come in here and get everything out of what was in this warehouse before. After that, we got in and with the freestanding design that the whole thing required is that 25 to 30 yards of concrete had to be poured before we could even start. Because it's so much steel, 35,000 pounds of steel, and because of the way it's engineered, uh, we had to cut footers into the concrete. So we actually had to pour 30 yards of concrete before anything could even happen. Once we got the okay, then um, the steel work could start. We started by building the trusses for the boulder, put up that 50-foot I-beam, 2,000-pounder. Then uh, got all the posts in place to make the main frame of the walls. After that, it was sheeting the plywood onto all the steel. A friend of Mark's, Troy, came in, who's an artist, and they wanted to design and do the painting of the thing. It basically just looked like sheets of plywood up in the sky. It went from plywood to basically like a burnt orange color, and then I was like, wow, that looks great. And then Mark started painting streaks and dropping stuff everywhere, and I'm like, oh no, he's gonna mess it up. I was actually kind of a little nervous that I was gonna just mess the whole paint job up and just make it look like mud. When it started happening, then you could see that, wow, all the colors would come out, and it really, truly is rocknasium. I'm really blown away at the colors. You won't see a gym with this paint job. Peanuts were interesting because it was something that was always dreaded. Mark built the other gym and they, he knew what was involved with how much T-netting we were going to have to do. Each one of those holes that you see in the wall is a T-net from the back. We use between 16 and 18,000 and each one of those T-nuts gets three little set screws. You're sitting in some pretty awkward areas up inside of the structures, hanging or upside down or whatever, trying to put T-nuts in and with three small screws. That was a lot of work and people really busted butt to get it done. Mark's idea was, hey, let's do a seamless floor. 
3,000 square feet of five inch deep foam. There's two different densities of foam. There's a really a nice commercial carpet and some really specific glues involved to keep it all together. Watch Boz and Carter have a meltdown. If this isn't, then you're gonna see a piece of foam go flying across. And a lot of painstaking asbesting work on Mark and Boz and I's part because we wanted that as a base to be perfect. Julia Child. And the carpet guys came and they had done a couple gyms before and they said, wow, this looked really nice. So we were proud of ourselves at that point. We're like, wow, cool, all that time was worth it. I've been surprised at how much small little detail things there has been to deal with. After each one of those big milestones was reached, it seemed like we had 10 other little tiny projects to deal with prepping the floor for finish, prepping the steps for finish, rusting all the metal for the corners. We had a lot of exposed steel in the design here in the mezzanine and in other places like the handrails up the stairs and just decided that a rusted look would kind of be cool and I've actually got a new nickname, I'm now called Rusty. A lot of the effects of the gym that we wanted to have come through, they came through because of attention to detail. Mark welded up so many different little tiny details that you may or may not ever notice, but we'll know. They're there and you know it's done right. I think everything here is similar, only better. A lot of the angles in the gym that were chosen were chosen based on the materials that we had to set with and how we set. The walls lend to being able to be changed, adaptable, and the angles of the walls lend to not a lot of cheating. There is more steep ground, a big stalactite. We had a finger crack. The bouldering is gonna be, I think, a lot better. Mark was a setter for so long. You gotta understand that part of that design is coming from that rounded perspective. If you build a climbing wall right, then it's gonna have a good climbing experience, and it might just happen to look cool, too. Cool factor happens if you build it right. What we want, really, is for our members to get stronger and be better climbers through the terrain that's here and the routes that are here, and I think it's there. I think it's gonna happen for us. Well, you might try to get it to where that hits at 40, right? But it'll still fit within there. There was a lot of challenges, honestly. I think not only were we trying to get through dealing with our personal lives, our families, running other businesses and things that we have going on, but also uh, keeping an eye on things here and being part of the workforce here every day. You had to keep an eye on yourself, too. I mean, you know. <laughs> Mark is beat up. The one main injury I had was my elbow. I think this is the first time in my life I've been to a, a doctor. I felt beat up too, honestly. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I smashed hands and fingers and, you know, wah, who cares, right? But you know what, it's just part of the toll. You don't eat very good, you don't sleep because you're thinking about what I'm gonna do tomorrow. We were getting tired. I mean, we were just living on full throttles. That's all we drank. But you know what, it's like, I, that's what we signed up for, you know, and it's what we decided to do, so suck it up, buttercup, you know. <laughs> Let's get the shit done, you know, <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, there were some stress moments, you know what I mean? Uh, I think I was ready to kill Boz at one time, mainly. Actually, it was him and Carter who kind of ganged up against me for what we were gonna do on the mezzanine, but uh, I think I won. I think we all adapted really well, because it's done. I think we did a good job working together and everybody kind of like focused on their tasks and we did a great job. Uh, bottom line, Mark cowboyed up big time I think to finish this and his arm might never be the same again but he did a good job. But you don't always look forward to the next day on a project like this. Some of the days you know are going to be brutal but when people are uh, there supporting you, driving you on to do it and get it done, you realize that you're doing it for not just your own reasons, you're doing it for a lot of people and a lot of other reasons. And it's great to look back on it, it doesn't seem half as bad as when we were doing it, you know, as far as how much work it was, but guess what, Mark and I are not retiring soon. <laughs> so, uh, I, we just secured the fact that we're not going to retire soon by building this. What we want people to get out of this place is what the Rock Nasium's always been about. It's a friendly environment that you can come and climb, and I think the design of the facility lends to that. The future of the Rock Nasium is all up to everyone else. We all have our parts to make it good and try to keep it going the right direction, but honestly, this place has definitely its, its own soul. It's about people 
it, it's not about plywood, it's not about you know, steel, it's about what happens when that all comes together. It's a good time to be a member of Rocknasium.